is going on, Petroheads? We come full circle at the exact same place where I started my first ever moto vlog. This was about five, six months ago. I started right here with my first moto vlog. The camera was in the, almost in the exact same location and I'm right back here again because today marks my 50th episode. And so for this 50th episode, I wanted to review my brand new Ducati 959 Corsa in this beautiful, gorgeous beach. And I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to come here uh, because of this whole crazy COVID-19 thing. What a crazy time in history to be alive. And I wanted to show you guys my bike and uh, talk a little bit about it. So I'm creating this review basically for you guys because right now we're in a really, really cool period in time in history where the motorcycles that we're now seeing, which is uh, the brand new V2 that just came out, the Ducati V4S that just came out, the V4R that just came out, all these motorcycles, the Panigale series of the motorcycles, I reviewed before. And I've come full circle with this whole adventure that I've been on. And uh, now I'm riding my 959, even though I've ridden all those motorcycles, and it's given me a huge perspective of the entire Panigale series. Now I have more of an educated opinion to give you guys on what I really think of this bike and if it's right for you. I'm not really sure what's right for you, but I can at least tell you if it's right for me. First things first, uh, I want to talk about the color of this motorcycle. Now we have, as you already know, most Ducatis come in the red color. And uh, they did something special with this bike because this is a 2017 MotoGP livery. And it comes with a matte finish. I absolutely love this matte finish. It has these little chrome accents that go around here. You see these lines right here? Beautiful silver chrome accents. So we're talking about a red that's really not a red, and I'll tell you why in a second. We have a flat white, and then we have some black over here, and we got some green. And I think all those colors combined make up the Italian flag, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully I'm not gonna be embarrassed by saying the wrong thing here, but I'm gonna assume that those are the colors of the Italian flag. But the reason why this, this bike is not a, a deep red like you would find in your traditional Ducati is because when they were building this bike, the color that they gave it is the color that would make it look red on TV. This is the reason why this red looks kind of like an orangey red. It's really kind of like a confused red. It's not really red and it's not orange. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle. If you're watching this on your iPhone right now or your mobile device or on your TV, the color of this spike is probably going to look red to you. But as I'm looking at it right now, it kind of looks like a confused red to me. So as you've seen my other videos, uh, I bought the bike with about a thousand miles here locally. I'm the second owner of this bike. I bought it with a thousand miles. Uh, being the second owner of this bike and being a 2019 model, I had absolutely no idea if I was buying a brand new bike or a used bike. To me, this thing is uh, spotless. It was absolutely beautiful when I bought it. I was lucky that I got it at a good price. And we're going to talk a little bit about the price because I'm sure that after you're finished watching this video, you're going to be interested in something similar like this for yourself. Uh, because as I, as I already mentioned, the V2s just came out, and as a result of the V2 and the, now the V4 came out, even though it's in a different class of bike, you might be interested in getting something like this because they are on sale right now. So when I bought this bike, uh, I got a pretty good deal on it. I'll keep the number to myself, but I got a pretty good deal on it. It already had a number of modifications done to the bike. The, the rear seat was deleted, so they put this beautiful uh, rear seat delete on because it makes it look absolutely gorgeous. It also has the, uh, the Pugue, hopefully I said that right, Pugue uh, windscreen. It's a little bit taller, a little bit bigger. It's great for uh, wind deflection. I recently took it to the track, which I'll show you in this video as well. Yes, I'm also going to show you my track session that I just did at Chuck Walla, so stay tuned for that. Let me tell you a little bit about the history of how I got started with uh, the Ducati brand. So one day I, I, I basically walked into the Ducati dealership with a friend of mine 
And uh, at that point, I got my uh, KTM, and I had a KTM RC390, loved that bike. And I still have the, uh, the RC390, except I have a cup bike now, which you can check out on my channel. But I went into the dealership and I absolutely fell in love with Ducati. Uh, me particularly, I'm a, I'm a car guy at heart. I've always been a car guy. And the Italian cars, the German cars, are two of my favorite types of manufacturers. Um, I love Porsche, as you already know, you've seen on my channel, I have a beautiful Porsche C2S. I just love the engineering behind it. I love the design, I love the colors. Everything about the bike and everything about the brand is, is gorgeous and it's upscale and uh, it's refined. And as I started researching it more and more and as I went for my second uh, test ride and my third test ride, I fell more and more in love with the brand and I took a test ride in the 959 at that time. Very, very nervous because at that time, the fastest bike I've ever ridden was a 42 horsepower KTM RC390. So riding a 150 horsepower plus Ducati to me was like a rocket ship and it's something that I wasn't really used to. So I rode the bike and I just fell in love with it. I just, I kept giggling the entire time. And um, here it is now. I mean, I, I had my 959. Unfortunately, I got into a small, tiny little accident with that bike, quote unquote, tiny little accident. And so I ended up scrapping that bike and um, I got this Ducati 959 Corsa and I just love everything about it. All right, so let me walk you through some of the modifications that I've done to the bike since I bought it. Like I mentioned, it already had the Pugue, but I've added some uh, safety features to the bike. So I added some rear protection. It already had the front protection here. And then I added these RNG frame sliders. Uh, they don't make the bike look ugly. Initially, I thought that it was gonna make it look ugly because this is black and this is white, but actually I don't even notice it anymore. And I love the whole design of this thing. I had carbon fiber here carbon fiber here. We got carbon fiber here as well. The RNG frame slider. As I mentioned, I have the seat, I had the seat delete that came with the bike already. And then as I'll discuss with you in a little bit, the bike was very uncomfortable for me. So I, ha I ordered, I think I paid like almost $200 for this uh, Ducati comfort seat. I got that. We have the, uh, the D access lever guards. I have it for the, the right and the left section. Some people question why I have both. Well, I guess it's for aesthetic reasons. I'm not a racer, I'm just a regular guy. Uh, so for aesthetic reasons, I like them. I thought it was cool looking, so I bought it. I also took this bike to Chuckwalla. So for Chuckwalla, I needed to uh, tape my video session. So I bought this. It's like a carbon fiber piece. I think I paid like 40 bucks for it on eBay. And let's see what else I did. Oh, I also did the, uh, the, the LED headlights. You can't really see it here, but uh, I have an LED headlight video that I'll link up in the description. You can take a look at that. It'll give you instructions on how you can do it yourself in a link where you can buy it. Oh, and I almost forgot. I did the entire tail tidy. Yeah, there you go. And just recently, I put on a brand new tire because the tire in the back was wasted. The bike currently has uh, 3,000 miles and the front tire is the one that came with the bike. So I kind of left that as is because I don't need it right now. But I did get a brand new rear tire. My good buddy Mauro um, at MD Performance in, here in San Diego installed that for me. Thank you Mauro, I really appreciate it. If you guys want to get some good deals on bike parts or tires or whatever, contact Mauro. I'll... And that's basically it as far as modifications are concerned. Honestly, it doesn't really need anything else. The bike is perfect as is. Alright, so pretty much the only thing left to do at this point is to take this bad boy for a little spin and we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. As this motorcycle purrs to life, the first thing that I wanna make very, very obvious is the sound. When I turned this motorcycle on for the first time, uh, when I tried out the demo model at the Ducati dealership, oh my God, uh, at that point, uh, the only thing, like I said, I was used to was my KTM RC390. So here I am riding a rocket ship that sounds like a freaking missile. It sounds like an angry beast. I was very, very thrown off by that and I was very, very intimidated at the same time. So I wanna just put this out there. The sound of this bike is just incredible. Really, really incredible. The shifting is very, very smooth. Although I told you I, I rode the, uh, the brand new V2, the V2 has the quick up and down shifter but it's not necessary because whenever I do downshift, 
I usually like to downshift and rev match the bike, like as an example here. Oh, and it sounds so wonderful when you do that. Passing power. Oh, passing power. So, as I mentioned, I got the bike about a thousand miles. Now it has three thousand miles. It's fully broken into. It's got a lot of power. And it's not like I get on the bike and I say to myself, after riding the V4R and the V4S and all these crazy 200 plus horsepower machines, and I say to myself, oh, you know what? This bike just doesn't do it for me anymore. I'm used to insane amounts of power and I want that again. I don't really say that when I ride this bike. I think it's got plenty of power for the street. I think it has good amount of acceleration, a perfect amount of torque, and if you're just a regular guy just like myself who is not a professional then this bike is probably better for you than those getting that v4s or that v4r a lot of people say it including myself those bikes have just way too much power for the street but you know to each their own i'm not knocking it because i love those bikes and eventually i'll have one but that being said it's a brand that has a cult-like following and uh you can plus one me on top of that because I love the Ducati brand and I just can't my, see myself separate from that brand. It's it's beautiful. The bike is so gorgeous, this particular bike that I'm riding right now. The 959 Corsa is just a dream come true to me because um, this, this whole motorcycle journey has just been wonderful and uh, this Ducati 959 just fulfills every dream I ever had. So if you're shopping for a Ducati 959 or a V2, first of all, I'll tell you what's right for me. 150 to 155 horsepower is perfect for me. I don't need any more. I don't need any less. This bike has that. Check. It has it has great potential for the track. I've taken it to the track and a little bit. You're going to see the track portion of this review. So stay tuned for that. It's perfect for the track. I absolutely love it. Um, at first when I got the bike, I did not like that it was so damn uncomfortable. But I kind of settled into the idea that I'm actually buying a race bike to be honest with you every single Penigali series that's out there is first and foremost a race bike and second for the street this bike's natural home is on the racetrack Corsa or even the regular 959 it doesn't matter if the thrift bike says Corsa and the regular 959 doesn't say anything about Corsa Corsa means racing the reason why this one's a Corsa is because of the MotoGP livery the Olin suspension as well as as well as the lithium-ion battery there are no other changes to this bike other than that so in my opinion it doesn't really make that much of a difference between a 959 and this yes some people prefer the uh, the Olin suspension because they buy this bike as a dedicated track bike and I completely get that it took a long time for me to open up to the idea of taking this bike to the track and I've racked up so many miles but I still haven't had the cojones to take this bad boy to the track until just recently and I'm really happy I did that because this COVID-19 bullshit has just ended all the fun for everybody but that being said I've gotten used to the bike and I'm used to the power delivery and I'm used to the, the ferociousness of it at this point, I'm very comfortable enough to pin the throttle because I've taken it to the track. I've pinned the throttle in the rain, just so you know, <laughs> which I'll show you in a little bit. So um, that being said, I'm pretty comfortable with the bike. I just wish I had more chances to take it on the track. Uh, I think more chances will definitely open up. But I love this bike. I absolutely love this bike. I made the right decision on buying a 959 because it's opened up a whole new world for me in the Panigale series. Um, in the future, I do plan to own other Panigales like the V4S or the V4R. Probably leaning more towards the V4R. It's just, it's just one of those bikes that once you get behind the wheel of, you, you just can't take it off of your mind. Oh, it's just on another level.
<laughs> this guy wants to play, let's go. Come on, I'll give you a head start, let's go. <laughs> you know, when I ride this bike, I become an eight-year-old. I've said that in my previous videos. Motorcycles in general don't make me an eight-year-old. Ducatis make me an eight-year-old. Specifically, the Pentagali series. Because they're the only bikes that can make me giggle like a schoolgirl. If you watch my V4S video and you watched my V4R video, as a matter of fact, even my first uh, 959 review that I did, the, the, the red one that I had, I giggle like a complete schoolgirl. And these, these bikes give me such pleasure, such joy. I'm talking about in terms of excitement behind the wheel. I'm talking about excitement driving a car versus driving a, riding a motorcycle. There's nothing more visceral than getting behind a Ducati, a 959, a V4S, a V4R. For me, this Ducati 959 Corsa is probably the best damn thing to give me a smile in the morning more than anything else. Well, there's one other thing that, that would put a bigger smile on my face, and you already know what that is, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, that being said, I love this bike. I love this bike. It makes me smile. It makes me giggle. It makes me happy. I don't, I don't really have anything on my mind when I ride this bike. I'm just, I'm, overall, I'm pretty happy. I'm not stressed. That feeling that I get when I pin the throttle that I did just go up that hill over there. I pinned it. I, I pinned the throttle and I had it pinned down from second gear or third gear, I believe, all the way to fifth. And I didn't let go. And my God, the sensation that went up my arm and into my brains through every single cell in my body. I just, I can't describe it. You have to own one of these things. You have to experience it for yourself. You have to demo a model. You just gotta do something and you'll be totally convinced. All right, so let's talk about the track. I took it to the track. It was freaking amazing. Uh, half of, uh, more than half of the day, it was raining. And I was very, very nervous. I had it in wet mode the entire time. Um, I really, really, really wanted to put it in sport mode and then race mode. But unfortunately, I just could not do it because I was just very nervous taking it to the track for the first time while it was raining. But I pushed myself to do it anyways. And I got some footage while it was raining. And then I think I got some footage when, it, when the, uh, the water, when uh, the, 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 um, the ground was, when the track was damp. I pushed it as hard as I could, and if you took a look, if whenever you watch the video, take a look at the uh, the traction control light. You're gonna see that it turns red, or it keeps blinking as soon as I exit the corner and pin the throttle. So if it wasn't for the traction control, if this was like a, one of those bare bones bikes, like my uh, KTM RC Cup bike with no traction control, I would have definitely spun out and crashed. But uh, given the electronics of this bike. Given the, all the technology that's embedded in this for safety in situations like that, man, it handled beautifully. Uh, around the corners, wow. It was just taking the corners so well. Even in wet mode, at 100 horsepower, at wet mode, it had acceleration like you couldn't imagine. At, at a, in wet mode, the bike is pretty much like a 600 class bike because it has 100 horsepower. But this bike weighs 380 pounds. At 380 pounds, and 100 horsepower, I would assume that it performs like a 600 class bike. So the acceleration for me was phenomenal still, but I just wish I could put it in sport mode, but I didn't have the chance to. But man, it glided in the corners and it made me feel so confident that I was able to ride in wet to damp conditions with a tire that was pretty old and had to be, had to be replaced. So I felt comfortable with that. Now I got my new tire, and I'm hoping that this crazy Corona bullshit is over with soon, that I can take it to the track and give it one more try. Because if it's completely dry out and sunny as it is today, and the temperatures are up a little bit, this bad boy in the corners will be a complete beast. And I can't wait to pin the throttle after I'm exiting the corner, because that'll be a rush like no other. I can't wait to do that, man. I love this bike so much. Oh, you have no idea how much I love this bike. 
if, you, if I were you, if I were in your shoes and you're looking between a V2 and a 559, this bike is absolutely the best value you could ever find right now. Because if you look around, you could probably find this bike for about 10 grand. The 2016-2017 model can definitely be had for about $10,000. $10, and that is one heck of a deal considering that out the door for a V2 model, you're looking at $21,000 plus out the door with taxes and finance fees and all that junk that they had on top of that. Just something food for thought. You're looking at a bargain here, a complete bargain. At one point, a couple years ago, this bike, I'm not talking about this bike, the 959 Corsa. This is a 29, 2019 model. You're never going to find it for 10 grand. But if you do find this bike, you'll definitely find it for about 14.5. And if you negotiate, maybe a little bit less. But all that aside, I'm not a dealership, so I really don't know the prices. But all that aside, it is one heck of a bargain right now if you even get the 959, the regular 959. I had a 2016 model, and between the 2016 model and this one, I see absolutely no difference. To me, it doesn't really make a difference. But anyways, um, just to conclude before, speaking of track, I want to conclude with this review and get to the track portion. Uh, I love everything about this bike. In the beginning, I was very uncomfortable with this bike, but after I started riding it and after I took it to the track, all my worries about the discomfort melted away because I realized that this bike is not meant for the street. It is meant for the track. And if you're going to buy this bike for the street, there is no reason why you should be complaining. So uh, I take that back. I got the comfort seat. It's made it a whole lot more comfortable for me. As far as uh, the speed is concerned, the power is concerned, the, the, the power is absolutely amazing. More than enough power on tap. I couldn't be happier with it. Um, Comfort-wise, like I said, I'm okay with the comfort now than I was before. Uh, the looks of the bike are absolutely gorgeous. The, the Corsa model gets so much attention, turns so many heads. Um, I changed the bulbs from uh, the regular lights to the, the, uh, the, the bright white lights. Now that looks really, really nice in the dark. Um, I haven't had any single issues with the bike in, in terms of mechanically. It's run pretty smooth. It starts up all the time. It never gives me an issue on startup. I haven't ridden the bike a single day where I haven't pinned the throttle at least once. Seriously, the, I, I haven't ridden the bike any day where I haven't taken it to Redline. So, this bike hasn't hiccuped once, it hasn't given me any issues, it hasn't gotten pissed off at me where it just stalls or whatever for no reason. Great bike, overall I would definitely give it, I would definitely give it a 9. There may be one or two niggles here and there that I'm not happy about, which I really can't think about. So to be fair, I'm definitely going to give this bike a 9. Uh, I'm, I'm taking off a 1 because there might be a thing or two, but I'd have to really think about it in order to find it. But uh, I definitely recommend this bike to you. Definitely get it. And with that being said, now let's go to the track portion of this review. Enjoy.
I thought I'd stop out here and take some photos and take a video in front of the Chukwala Valley Raceway. I don't even know what the heck this thing is. Looks like a gigantic barrel. But anyways, I had to take a picture here and uh, show you guys the tire because I had three, uh, three rain sessions and I had one good dry session. But check the tire out, man. The, the, the almost uh, no chicken strips and on that side as well. And I'm taking the bike back in one piece. This side has less chicken strips than the other side. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because I, I'm i more comfortable leaning over in one side than the other. But um, anyways, uh, the bike is going back in one piece. And I'm pretty happy about that. And that pretty much wraps it up as far as uh, the track day, uh, portion of this video is concerned. And... Um, uh, there's there's so much to be said about how I like this bike and the feeling and everything about it. But anyways, wrapping this up.